Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So, this week, we are heading to Modern to play Endless Whispers, which came out on top of last week's poll, squeaking out a victory. There was a whole bunch of options in the mid-20% range, but Endless Whispers came out on top, so it gets to be our Against the Odds deck for this week. And then next week... We will have Eldritch Moon cards on Magic Online, which means we're going to have a string of sweet Eldritch Moon focused against the odds decks in a row. So make sure to head over to the article. There's a link in the description to vote for which one you want to see most. Anyway, a quick reminder before we break down Endless Whispers. If you enjoy Against the Odds, take a minute. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff is a super awesome and cheap way that you can support the site. So that would be amazing of you. Anyway, let's talk Endless Whispers in Modern. So Endless Whispers is a 4-mana black enchantment that gives every creature an ability where whenever it dies, it comes back into play under an opponent's control at the beginning of the next end step. So if our opponent's creature dies at the beginning of the next end step, we're going to get that creature. If our creature dies at the beginning of the next end step, our opponent's going to get that creature. So our deck is doing two different things with Endless Whispers. We kind of have two plans. So one thing, the best thing, the most instant win way to take advantage of Endless Whispers is to play Phage the Untouchable. So Phage is a really unique card. When it deals combat damage, you win the game. It has pseudo death touch. If it deals combat damage to a creature, that creature is destroyed. But when it enters the battlefield, if you didn't play it from your hand, you lose the game. So with Phage, what we want to do is get the Endless Whispers on the battlefield. Eventually, we cast a Phage from our hand, or else we would die. And then we kill the Phage, and the Phage comes back into play from our graveyard on our opponent's side of the battlefield, and they lose the game to the Phage trigger this, uh, because it didn't come into play from their hand. So that's kind of one plan of this deck is to Endless Whispers, get the Phage back, under our opponent's control, they lose the game on the spot. We have Dark Petition to help us set this up. Our deck plays a ton of spells because they're important to the second plan of our deck. So we can often have Spell Mastery, and we can use that to search up our Endless Whispers, search up our Phage to get the combo kill. So as I was building this deck, I thought, well, what is the sweetest thing you can do with Endless Whispers? And there's not many Phage-like effects. Phage, why I'm talking about it first, is kind of like the end game it is like our primary plan but it's not our only plan what we also want to be doing with endless whispers is just killing our opponent's stuff so you know i love bribery and i love stealing our opponent's creatures well with the endless whispers on the battlefield we can turn slaughter packs and go for the throats and victim of knights and bio blights into essentially control magics that steal our opponent's creatures not only do they steal those creatures we get any enter the battlefield abilities they might have so if our opponent plays a tarmogoyf and we got an endless whispers we're like all right sweet tarmogoyf is a pretty good card i wouldn't mind having a tarmogoyf we go for the throat the tarmogoyf and then our next end step we get the tarmogoyf and imagine that against uh, thought not seers and uh, drowner of hopes and all those powerful creatures that see play primeval titans and infer no titans there's so much sweet stuff we can steal so our deck is just overloaded on removal so not only can we possibly kill with phage with the combo and this removal is beneficial as well because a lot of it go for the throats victim of knights kills our phage as well so we can use it to facilitate the phage combo by killing our own phage but we also use it to just kill our opponent's stuff, hopefully with Endless Whispers on the battlefield, and then we get their creatures and we beat our opponent down with their own creatures that we stole with our Endless Whispers. So Dismember, Hero's Downfall, Liliana the Veil, vale, all the same thing. There are ways to take care of creatures. Hero's Downfall is nice because it can also hit a Planeswalker, so it's kind of a main deck way to deal with Nahiri. Liliana also has additional benefit against decks that might not have creatures. That's one of the scary things, is when we're playing this much creature removal, if we run into a deck that just doesn't play creatures, we're going to have a rough go of it, but Liliana gives us a way to pressure those kind of decks. And we also have some Wraths, which can potentially do some absurd stuff. Can you imagine? Now, just picture this. We're playing uh, Affinity, for example, and they're flooding the board with creatures. We manage to get Endless Whispers down. Then the next turn, we cast a Damnation. We could be stealing 
10 creatures at once against a deck like Affinity or a deck like Zoo or even just dealing like a double Tarmogoyf plus Huntmaster of the Fells against Jund. So much value with a Wrath if we have the Endless Whispers on the battlefield. And then we do have a few cards to help us deal with non-creature permanents. Uh, they're still going to be rough matchups, but things like Inquisition, Thoughtseize, and Ratchet Bomb give us a chance to deal with ad nauseums, with scape shifts, cards like that that we just will have a hard time beating because those decks don't really rely on creatures to win. Then we have a bit of card draw. Help us find more removal. We want to keep drawing cards. Most of our removal, the Wraths aside, are one-for-one one removal spells. So one way we can stay ahead is by drawing extra cards, mostly by Phyrexian Arena, but assign in blood as well. In the mana base, we have a Cavern of Souls to set on Minion. Like I said, only one creature in the deck. It is Phage, two copies of it. But we really want that Phage to resolve, because once we resolve a Phage, it's going to be really hard for our opponent to win, especially if we have the Endless Whispers on the battlefield, because if they kill it, they're going to lose to the Endless Whisper trigger. If they don't kill it, it's going to attack them every turn, and they're either going to have to chump in a way that doesn't kill the Phage, or they die, or they're going to die to the when Phage deals damage, you that player loses the game trigger. So Cavern on minion, make sure our opponent can't just counter our Phage. Ghost Quarter lets us steal our opponent's creature lands. If our opponent fires up a Shambling Vent or a Creeping Tarpet, we can Ghost Quarter it. And since it's a creature, when it dies, it triggers Endless Whispers. We get that land at the end of our opponent's turn. Radiant Fountain helps us make up for all the life that we lose to Phyrexian Arenas and Signs in Blood. And Urborg, four copies, is a little excessive. It is legendary, but it makes all our lands swamp, so it's a little more bearable to play all these colorless lands because Urborg lets him tap for black mana and hopefully we can discard additional copies to Liliana. And then just a bunch of literal swamps. In the sideboard, we have a bunch more ways of dealing with non-creature permanents, which, as I mentioned before, is the soft spot of this deck. So we get Pithing Needles, Four Planeswalkers, and Oblivion Stones, things like that. Thought Seizes to hit those cards preemptively out of our opponent's hands. Another Ratchet Bomb, which is really good against tokens, but also really good against Graft Digger's Cage and Rest in Peace in Relic of Progenitus. Our plan does involve the graveyard, so those cards do stop us from winning with Endless Whispers. Ratchet Bomb is a way to wipe those things away that also has additional value against cheap creatures. And then some Fulminator Mages, mostly for Tron, uh, another way to destroy lands and kind of disrupt our opponent's uh, Tron plan. Then we have some more ways to deal with a bunch of little creatures. Curse of Deathhold, if we get it down early enough or on a clean board, it can lock a deck like Affinity or Boggles pretty much out of the game altogether, giving everything negative one, negative one. And Drown and Sorrow deals with a whole bunch of Lingering Souls token, Young Pyromancer tokens, uh, Delver of Secrets, Dark Confidants, decks that are kind of going wide, Elves, with a bunch of little creatures. It wipes them all away. And this is the best option because we actually want the creatures to die. So the rest of the sideboard, a single Witchbane Orb, basically our version of Leyline of Sanctity. It's an artifact. Eh, I guess that's okay, but it gives us Hexproof. We can tutor it up with our Dark Petition. And then a couple of Shadows of Doubt. It cycles in the worst case. When we run into a deck that just doesn't care about creature removal, we at least want something that cycles to go into those slots. Plus, we can use it to stop tutoring effects. We can kind of get a fetch land with it, potentially an expedition map, a scape shift. Shuts down those kind of effects from killing us. So that is our Endless Whispers deck in Modern, and I think this deck is pretty sweet, although just how successful it will end up being, I think mostly depends on our matchups. If we run into mostly creature decks, and before I built this deck, I did look at the Modern meta, and most decks near the top of the format are trying to win with creatures, but if we run into those decks, I think this deck is going to be super sweet. We just kill things, get down our Endless Whispers, steal all our opponent's creatures, beat them down with their own creatures, and win the game. With Phage being the way we can win if the game goes long, it's pretty guaranteed to win if we get to turn 7, 8, 9, 10. It's pretty much going to happen. Uh, so if we run into those matchups, I think this deck is going to perform really well. On the other hand, if we run into a bunch of fringe matchups, we're playing non-stop Scapeshift, Ad Nauseam, uh, Storm-type decks, 
then we're going to have a really rough go because half of our main deck is going to be dead cards in all the creature removal. We're going to try to bring in stuff from the sideboard and it still might not be enough, even with more discard and shadow of doubts and fulminator mages and witchbane orbs. So cross your fingers, hope you run into creature decks and we can have a fun time using our endless removal with our endless whispers to form endless control magics and just steal all of our opponent's stuff and maybe steal some games with phage as well <laughs> anyway that is our endless whispers deck for against the odds i hope you enjoy the videos thank you very much for watching and i will talk to you soon